So we have these uh, the muscles that we have superhyoid and infrahyoid muscles. Right? And I've got the origin insertions on these listed and actions and stuff, but I don't really need to worry so much about doing anything on all of those. Okay? Just understand there's a hyoid bone. Okay? We have superhyoid bones or muscles that are above the hyoid and then infrahyoid is down below. And they have to do with things like maintaining the floor of your mouth, giving a base for your tongue to move from, and raising and lowering the hyoid bone, things to do with uh, swallowing and things like that. Okay, so those are going to be, here's the hyoid bone, because that's something that you need to know for palpation. So basically, if you have this part of your, underneath your chin, goes back where that corner ends right there, that's the hyoid bone. Okay, if you move it back, you can feel kind of the cartilage moving around. Okay. And then all these muscles above here are superhyoid, all the ones below are infrahyoid. And then here when you get in deeper, these are muscles of the pharynx and larynx. Then here's going to be the hyoid bone, and then here's your thyroid cartilage. Because the thyroid cartilage is basically what you call the Adam's apple, so you can feel that little knot on the front. Something kind of like. And you can feel that little notch. But typically, it's more prominent on males than females. That's basically going to be that thing right there. So here's the thyroid cartilage. In it. Comes forward and has their own notches. And then when you talk about head movements, that one of the main flexors of the head is the sternocleidomastoid. We were talking about what it happens when it when it only moves one side, but if it moves together, it's going to flex the head forward like that. Okay. And I mean, there's more complicated movements that get into it. There's some other deep neck flexor, like the longest coli, because the sternocleidomastoid is not actually going to do this type of flexion, it's more, because it's attached to the mastoid, it's more in the back of the head, so it's going to do this, but it is going to flex the head forward in a way that your head is up. Then there's muscles deeper on the front of the neck, and they're going to do more of this type of neck flexion, which is going to be the longest coli. And then also we'll talk about the scalenes which are going to be behind the sternocleidomastoid just in this area here. So here's a picture of the sternocleidomastoid. So this, now we're talking about ones that you need to know. I mean, the, it's got the origin insertion of all the all these superhyoid and infrahyoid, but don't worry about knowing those for the, for the test. Just like I said, no, they're superhyoid is above and superhyoid is below. But this SCM you do need to. Okay, so here it shows how when you contract on one side, it's going to do what kind of lateral flexion is it going to be? Ipsilateral or contralateral? Ipsilateral meaning to the same side and then contralateral rotation. Take a quick breath in. 
the film of pop liquor. So they're not normally going to be used with normal breathing, but if you have to do a deep breath or if somebody has problems with their other muscles or if they're straining to breathe, they have, to have emphysema or asthma or something like that. And I think in the in the book they don't really get into a lot of times they're not going to get into the exact motion as far as lateral flexion and rotation. And depending on what book you read, that they may say what, that it rotates away. But from what I've seen in the books I've looked at, and then also I looked at, there was a study where they, I, I don't have a copy of it, but I can put it on the screen side, where they did this thing where they had like these monkeys or something, and they did experiments where they, where they put an you know, electrode or something into the muscle, and they contracted the muscle, and then they watched that the scaling would rotate towards the same side. And so basically, they elevate the first and second rib, and their respiratory muscle. Most of the time, that's all you need to know from the scalings, but they, they do lateral uh, flex and rotate to the same side. And what's going to be significant later when you get into more clinical stuff is that you have the scaling triangle right here, which is between the, the anterior scaling and then the medius and the posterior. There's an opening right there, which is the triangle between the first rib and the two the bellies of the muscle. That's where the thoracic outlet goes through. And so when we talk about thoracic outlet later, that's going to be significant. And so then here's the uh, middle scalene. Again, it's going to go to the first rib. And then, so that actually should only say elevate the first rib. Together, they're going to, the scaling muscles together are going to elevate the first two ribs and their accessory respiratory muscles. And then the posterior scaling is going to come from lower down on the transverse process, whereas the middle is going to come from T through C2 through C7. So here's, this is out of the text. And then here's the sternocleidomastoid. So this would be the sternal portion, and this would be the cleido portion or the clavicle portion. And then here it shows the scalings, where the anterior and the middle go to the first rib, and the posterior goes to the second rib. And then again, there's the, the scaling triangle where the thoracic outlet comes through. And this is the picture out of the book. Right now we're moving towards the back side, okay? And the main muscle we'll talk about in the next grouping is the erector spinae, but here's some other ones in the top. So the splenius, that means bandage. So it's kind of wraps around here like a, like a, a flat bandage type thing. But the thing to remember also is if it says capitis, where do you think it's going to go to? To the head, right? So it's going to go to the octopus up here. And then splenius cervicus is going to go to the cervicals. And I, I've got another picture that shows underneath there would be a better idea of it. But basically, they're going to come from the spinous process of, of C7 to T6 from this area here. Part of it that goes to the mastoid is going to be the capitis, and then the uh, cervicus is going to go to the transverse process of C2 to C4 underneath there. And then here's splenius cervicus here. So splenius capitis would go up here, and it's taken away. And then here's splenius cervicus. You can see it goes into the transverse process. 